This is program seven of Videotel series on practical marine electrical knowledge. The series is made up of eight programs. This program lists the minimum preparation procedures to be carried out on board ship in anticipation of an electrical survey. The International Maritime Organization and the International Electrotechnical Convention have several codes and regulations relating to safe electrical practice. These must be studied and adhered to when carrying out any work on marine electrical systems. There are many system variations around, so it is most important that you become familiar with the components of the electrical system and the layout of the main switchboard immediately you join a ship. Pay particular attention to the layout of the emergency switchboard. This study will pay dividends during a blackout or when troubleshooting the cause of a major breakdown. Now, we must emphasize electrical safety. The golden rule is, before any work is done on an electrical installation, first isolate the circuit by removing the supply fuses or locking the circuit breaker in the open position so that the circuit cannot be energized accidentally. Then post a warning sign to alert others that the circuit is being worked on. Then prove the circuit dead with a voltmeter or an approved line tester. A switchboard can never be considered dead unless all AC generators connected to it are stopped, locked off and all other supplies are disconnected. These points can never be emphasized strongly enough. The electrical rescue procedure is described in program one of this series. The ship's electrical equipment is inspected and tested during the complete engine survey which is carried out every four years. The electrical survey guidance given in this program is based on the periodical survey regulations of a classification society. First, prepare a complete list of all insulation resistance readings for AC generators, motor, power and light circuits and main feeder cables with special attention to cables in hazardous areas. When you take insulation resistance readings of AC generator windings, this should be done when the AC generator is still hot after running on load. A reading of one megohm is an acceptable value for a 440 volt AC generator winding. For the lower voltage rotor winding, this can be 0.5 megohm. Clean all AC generator windings and check your instruments and controls for AC generator synchronizing. The survey will require that the AC generators respond correctly to controls and load changes and that they show a stable operation when running in parallel. Test the automatic startup system for the emergency AC generator ensuring that the system is operational within the regulation 45 seconds after a mains failure. Connect the emergency AC generator to the switchboard with a load, such as the motor for a firefighting pump. When you're ready to connect the AC generator to the emergency switchboard, do remember that the AC generator breaker cannot be closed until the tiebreaker from the main switchboard is opened. Check that the board is dead, then check all internal connections in the main as well as in the emergency switchboard, ensuring that all connections are clean and dry. Any connections which do not prove tight enough must be remade and rechecked. All main buzz bar and auxiliary connections throughout the boards should be checked for loose joints. Buzz bar supports should be examined for surface tracking and possible damage to the insulation material. Check that all circuit breakers will pass a visual test, paying particular attention to the condition of main, arcing, 
and auxiliary contacts. All internal wiring must be sound and the mechanical linkages free of wear and stress. Arc chutes must be clean, free of arc debris and correctly aligned. Look for signs of wear, misalignment or overheating. Check the reverse power relay and the preferential trip relay for correct timing and operation. Consult the ship's manual for correct settings. Check and clean all starters, as the surveyor will probably conduct spot checks on starters. He will look for badly burned or misaligned contacts, loose connections, worn pigtails on moving contacts, and signs of overheating on coils, transformers and resistors. Check that all motor stator windings are clean and dry. The surveyor may take one or two ventilating grids off to inspect the windings for cleanliness and dryness. This applies particularly to drip-proof, weatherproof and deck watertight enclosures. The surveyor will want to look for the ingress of water or oil. Check and test the steering gear overcurrent alarms. As these do not trip the system, but merely warn if overcurrent conditions arise. Check all main and alternative electric supplies, including the changeover switching for electric control from the bridge and for autopilot. Check the rudder position indicator. Check the emergency battery condition and ensure that the charger functions efficiently. The battery tops must be clean with no corrosion of the terminals and connections. The battery electrolyte should be at its correct level and have the proper value of specific gravity checked by a hydrometer. Check the navigation light panel and prove the alarm system to be working. The surveyor may remove a fuse to check if the appropriate alarm is operating correctly. Check all exterior light fittings. Replace any burned out lamps. On exterior floodlight fittings, Check the flexible cable connections for any sign of damage to the cable insulation. Any temporary cabling, which is to be in use for some time, has to be made permanent. The cables must be laid and clipped safely and securely in the appropriate support trays. Remember that cables for intrinsically safe circuitry must be laid separately from others of different classification and clearly marked as such. If your ship is classified for unattended machinery space, a so-called UMS operation, the electrical survey will be extended to include all alarms, fire detection controls and fail-safe installations. All alarms associated with the main engine, auxiliary machines, lubrication and cooling are to be tested for correct function by operating the sensor switches by hand or simulating the switch action under the expected alarm conditions. The duplicate bilge level alarms must be proved to work to the satisfaction of the surveyor. Check that all required electrical spares are available for inspection in the electrical spare store. They must be correctly stored and in good condition.
This concludes the subject for Programme 7. Here we have recommended a list of jobs which should be carried out in preparation for an electrical survey. We recommend that you watch this programme again and that you consult the book Practical Marine Electrical Knowledge which accompanies this series and will allow you to study certain aspects in greater detail. Finally, here's a list of contents for all the programmes in the series. Mm -hmm.